Good morning, welcome home to Mailer's Landing. It is the last week of May, and I got a bunch of planting done over the last couple of days. I'm sorry I didn't bring you along. I did not have the bandwidth to handle a camera while I was doing this, but let me show you what we've got here. So you'll notice she looking full, she looking full. So we got the tomatoes in last week, and you'll notice there's a new arch in the middle. It's gonna be cucumbers. And on these trellises, oh my God, peas. Y'all look at these beautiful peas. And on the outsides, in between each of these, I've planted on this close arch, let's see if we can get you down here, put in some green beans. And then on the middle arch, we've done melons, little personal size melons. And then on the arch closest to the gate side there, we also did cucumbers. I also put cucumbers along the fence on the Ruth Stout plot and more beans because I had a lot of beans left over from putting them in there. So we've got beans in there. We've got a few kinds of squash in there. So most of the main garden is planted now and I'm gonna put in some flowers here and there over the next couple of weeks. I've still got a bunch of stuff hardening off and I started some zinnias in the greenhouse. So we'll definitely have flowers to go out in there. Big project for today is to get the corn in. Bill and Lib carved out a plot in the way back for me and I cannot wait to get stuff growing in there. It gets about, I would say a good four to five hours of full sun every day. So we should be okay back there. This is our corn and you can see it is more than ready to have been in the ground like last month. Well, not last month, but last week perhaps. Look at these roots. I gotta get these babies in. Um, I have a full tray of them. I've got 32, should have 32 plants. Um, Although it may be more, I'm looking at these cells right now and I'm realizing I double planted, so good times. Um, anyway, you'll see these guys have been ready to go in the ground for a few days. So I'm going to get those back to the way back plot, let you guys see what's going on back there. And then we need to get these babies into the ground, into the ground. Okay, so you've got to see this setup with the hose because the house is way back there behind us. So we've got the hoses um, hooked together to make this stretch all the way to way back there. Let me show you. So this is this beautiful little plot that Bill and Liv reclaimed. You can see there, this was all knotweed before. So we're not sure if that stuff is gonna poke up and through or not. We've got quite a layer of cardboard down and then compost. And then you can see we got, Bill got two thirds of this chipped up. He's just been so busy the last couple of days. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna use more than what we've got the wood chips on top of. So let me show you what we're fighting against here um, because this is reclaimed. Everything that was here before was not weed. Um, and this stuff is, this stuff is the worst. Um, it looks like this. People commonly mistake it for bamboo. Um, and it just, dude, it's everywhere. We had this at our last place too, and it was just such a bear. Bill was cutting it down every week, and you can see over here, it's, let me turn the camera around. You can see over here, it's already peeking back up where it's been mowed down. It's just the kind of thing that we're gonna have to stay on for a long time. Oh, some of it's already coming up right over there. Look at this jerk right in my corn plot so the knotweed is going to be a thing that we're dealing with for a while um, we're just going to keep pulling it down as it comes up and 
maybe eradicate it. This stuff is awful. It just takes over and it's fast growing. It's fast, it's fast. Like it takes about three days and dude, you have so much knotweed. So I'm gonna get in here and plant some corn today. This will be our first test drive on this plot in the back here. So I'm looking through these corn. Um, and it definitely looks like there's more than 32 here. It looks like everywhere I put a corn kernel in, I put two corn kernels in. So we should have enough room here. We should have enough room. I'm gonna space these probably about eight to 10 inches apart when I put them in the ground and that should help us out. My biggest concern right now is separating them. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's not too terrible, but look at this, it, it might be kind of terrible. Luckily these are super wet, so I don't have to do a whole lot of tearing um, to separate them. But look at these beautiful roots. I'm pretty sure I put some mycorrhizal inoculant in with the water when I started these. And uh, for sure, y'all, we got, we got some roots. We got some roots. So that wasn't nearly as traumatizing as I was afraid it could be. So we've got two nice corn plants out of that. Hello, we're corn. And um, I'm gonna start separating and getting these folks into the ground. I'll tell you what, it is buggy as I'll get out out here, so I'm gonna hurry. I'm also gonna give you a time lapse so you can see what's going on here and what I'm doing. Um, just right now, I'm gonna start by separating out all these corn plants and laying them down so I can see the spacing. Ideally, I'm gonna plant them about eight to 10 inches away from each other. I'm going to plant them in a block so that it's easy for them to pollinate. Um, and then we're just gonna put them in the ground. Here goes. <laughs> Cheez-Its. We need to talk about this thing that I'm doing that I've got to stop doing. I got three plants there. I got three plants to pick apart here. Um, and that's all my own fault. I double sewed and apparently triple sewed in some places into these cells. And I don't know why the heck I do that. Um, it's a pain in the butt to get these apart. I mean, it's not awful. Um, but it is one more step. And I always feel worried that I'm gonna kill something off before it even has time to get into the ground. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think I'm gonna stop doing that. The idea is that if you've got a crummy germination rate for some reason, like old seeds, maybe, maybe I'll double sow older stuff that I've got. Really, almost every one of those cells had two plants in it, if not three. Um, so, for example, I've been tucking beans into corners everywhere because I double sewed my beans and every one of them came up. So maybe this is a change to make for next season that we just, we single sew, <laughs> we single sew from here on out. So I'm gonna get this stuff into the ground. I've got, um, with these additions, I'll have one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight rows of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna have 64 plants in here, <laughs> which makes sense. I mean, there were 32 cells and <laughs> so um, I'm gonna get these into the ground now. I'm just gonna simply part the mulch, put them in, walk away. Because we are um, planting into this rich compost medium, I'm not gonna fertilize them from the get-go. I did pick up some blood meal to side dress them as the season goes on if they need it. Um, but today I'm just putting them in the ground, simply, simply putting them in the ground. I'll put on a time-lapse for y'all so you can see it happen. And uh, 
Then we'll get it watered in. Here we go. So it's in. So I did a count and there are 55 plants in there. Pretty good on that. I was like, y'all, Bill chipped into the into the plot and covered it up and I never told you. I bit the bullet. <laughs> I went ahead and bought a wood chipper. We blew through six cubic yards of mulch in an afternoon <laughs> the other day. So it was either we were gonna buy another mountain of mulch and not know how much we were gonna use and how much we weren't gonna use, or it was gonna be, we bought, I bought a wood chipper. I bought a wood chipper, so um, Bill's going to finish filling in the rest of that probably on the weekend, so we'll get that going. I'm going to water it down, but I wanted to show you something else. Remember I told you that this is a compost bed? Um, we've got these guys coming in here and there on the unchipped side of the bed. And I think I'm gonna leave them because a lot of this compost was kitchen scraps in its previous incarnation. I'm gonna leave it. We could get we could get a whole bunch of things. Um, those look like uh, they might be squash or they might be cucumbers. So I'm just gonna leave them, water them in with everybody else and we'll see how they do. Boy, oh boy, these are gonna be tricky to water going forward. I think I need to, uh, I may need to purchase 10 more feet of hose. It's, uh, I definitely, from where I'm at over there, I can't water at the base, so I'm gonna have to figure something out about that. Right now, I just watered it overhead. We're not into the high heat of the day, so they should be fine. Um, but yeah, I gotta figure out a good solution for that, hopefully before the weekend. <laughs> So our corn is planted and hopefully we will we'll get a good harvest out of that. It is, I don't know if I mentioned we planted strawberry popcorn. So it should be little ears, um, bright red corn. So the nice thing about growing popcorn is that I'll know exactly when it's ready to be harvested. <laughs> um, it has to dry out and we're gonna wait for the husks to get golden and be finished for the season and then we'll be able to bring it back in. I gotta tell you, I'm a little concerned. We have had a bear back there before. So this is, the popcorn is nothing that will be heartbreaking if we lose it all to a bear. Um, it'll be more of a, I don't wanna say more of a cautionary tale, but uh, I'll be a lot more comfortable with losing that than if I lose a whole bunch of tomatoes. And where that area is not fenced off, there is no barrier between the wildlife and, um, the corn, <laughs> it's uh, it's better to put something out there that I'm gonna be okay with. Corn is corning, <laughs> and I think I'm gonna get one of the containers ready for peanuts. That's one of the last things that needs to go in from the bunch that we're hardening off over there. I have some other stuff that I need to start hardening off in the next couple of days to get them ready for a planting on Monday or Tuesday, so I gotta get stuff in the ground so I have space on the shelf. I have feelings about that. But <laughs> the, uh, the brooder that the chickens were in inside is gonna become a nice tall planter. And I think I'm gonna use that for the peanuts. I need to take a look at them and see how much it's gonna take to fill that big silver brooder planter. It's a planter now. I'm gonna put some logs in the bottom and then fill it up with compost um, out of the, the special sauce pile over there that seems to be doing really well. 
y'all, I'm dying to find out if those little sprouts are gonna come up um, back by the corn. Maybe we'll have like, surprise, cucumbers, because we eat a lot of cucumbers, so it's entirely possible there are a lot of cucumbers. We also, over the weekend, we hollowed out and stuffed into the compost some melons, so there might be some melons coming up. We'll have to see, they all look similar, right? Hey, buddy. How you doing, Joker? Thank you for hanging out with me and Joker in the garden today and getting that corn plot put in. I'll catch you up soon. Take care. Woohoo!